friends. Welcome to the Lug Life Podcast. My name is Adam. My name is Sherry. Sherry Beth, what episode is this? 122. It is. And you want to know what the fun fact about number 122 is today? I do. This actually is kind of interesting. <laughs> okay, first of all, rude. You're going to start off the episode giving me sass? Yeah. That's basically my life. Um, <laughs> this, I do think, is kind of a fun fact. The world's oldest verified person mm-hmm. was a name uh, Jean Louise Calmet. Uh, who lived to be 122 years. And 164 days. And 164 days. She is the um, oldest verified person. Yeah. There are other reports of people who are living older. Those have not been verified. Um, Would you want to live to be 122? Oof. I don't know. I mean, so the years that she lived, she was born in 1875 and she died in 1997. Which is crazy. She's from France. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of things that happened in that time period. Think of the things the, that she saw. Right. The Industrial resolu- re- Resolution. The, nope. the Industrial Resolution. Revolution. The, um, I think the French Revolution was during that time. That's crazy. I might be wrong on my dates, but I, uh, wow. I mean, she, I mean, she lived through a lot of things. And I think, you know, think of like life in, oh, maybe the French Revolution was 1700s. The French Revolution was a hundred years earlier. Okay, so I'm off on that one. But here's the thing. If she had lived to 222, (laughs) she would have. Dang it. Well, yeah. But I mean, think of like, you know, the late 1800s and what life would have been like. Um, versus 1997, like when we were in high school. Very crazy. Very different. She was alive during our lifetime. Yeah. And uh, man, I don't know if I would want to live that long. Do you have, and this is going to be my flawless segue into this week's episode, this week's topic. (laughs) Do you have a fear of death? Um, I think no more than normal. Okay. Um, I think I have a fear of the unknown, um, but I don't think that I have a fear of dying. And I think part of that is because I've come so close so many times. That's true. Um, I think at this point it's just like, bring it on. I don't have a fear (laughs) of death. I do have a fear of dying. The, the act of dying scares me very much. And maybe it's the act of, like, not wanting to suffer. Maybe it's not dying. Maybe it's yeah. just the uncertainty around, like, well, wait, like, how how am I dying? Like, how would I die? Yeah, I mean, if I had to, like, relive any of my ways that I have almost died, I would not want to. See? Exactly. Like, if I'm going to die, just make it quick. Yeah, I agree. So, the reason I asked that question is mm-hmm. that the topic this week, <laughs> it's all about our phobias. Our phobias. Our fears, things we are afraid of. Um, we have a few of them that are shared uh, that are shared yeah and then we have a few that are unique to us yeah all right sherry let's start with our shared phobias spiders oh um and here's the thing i uh i hate anything creepy crawly you don't I, like any bugs i don't like any bugs i don't know that it's so much like actually a phobia um i just hate them um anything creepy crawly i want i just want dead So I don't have... Across the board. uh, It's true. You do. Um, (laughs) To me, it's not a phobia of all spiders because there are like some small spiders or even like daddy long legs or things like that that I can can see and I can kill. I am not one of those people who will relocate a spider outside. Absolutely not. No, we're just killing it it if it's in our house. They all need to die. You you trespassed in my house. You deserve to die. But to me, when I see photos of like these gigantic spiders in like tropical places or in Australia... I feel like an anxiety rise up, even just seeing photos. I would agree with that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. So spiders is very much one that we share. Yeah. Um, Which is really fun when there's a spider in the house and we, one of us needs to. Well, here's the nice thing though, is that in Alaska, it. we don't have big spiders. We don't no. have any poisonous spiders. We don't have really. any poisonous spiders. Um, And so I feel like when you call me to murder a spider i feel like i do a pretty good job you do um i do want to tell one funny uh phobia bug story though we covered this in a vlog when we were in fiji we got back to our bungalow one day and there was a giant bug in the corner (laughs) and we both saw i still have no idea what kind of bug this was it's a dead bug and that's all that matters correct but the problem was it took a lot to kill it yeah it did take a lot to kill it 
The problem was that like neither of us wanted to get close, but I knew it was like, well, I'm going to have to do this. And so we got a box because it was on the floor. And so we got like a box that had some like weight to it. And I literally lobbed the box at it and it just so happened to like land perfectly on it where it didn't die at first. And that's the scariest thing. This box lands on this bug and it doesn't die. And it was it was full of stuff. Like it was heavy and this bug was big enough that the box, like the bug was just like, what? Yeah. And so then went over to the box and pressed down and then you heard the crunch. <laughs> Pretty gross. <laughs> so yeah, Yes, I agree. So spiders, but I feel like that's kind of a common one. Yeah. The next shared one I think is also common. Snakes. Ugh. I am not okay with snakes. Um, and I understand that there's a lot of not poisonous snakes. Doesn't but there are. It doesn't matter. A Does snake is a snake matter. is a snake. They're all no ropes. All of them. I. Um, Hard pass on anything snaky. People are just like, oh, they're just little ones. They're just like, they're tiny little. Does don't, not matter. Don't care. It's not poison. It's not going to hurt you. Who I don't cares? care. I do not care. That's the equivalent to me. I remember we went to New Smyrna Beach in Florida, which is the shark bite capital of the world. <laughs> and we heard somebody in New Smyrna be like, oh, that's nonsense. Most of them are just nibbles. And I'm like, uh, excuse me. I don't want to be nibbled on by a shark either. Nope. Mm. How, about, how about none? How about none shark exposure? Nibbles. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so yes, snakes for me are a gigantic no. It's one of the reasons, like, again, in Alaska, no snakes. No snakes. Um, and honestly, that's Ugh. that's been part of our discussion. Like when we discuss moving out of Alaska, we're like, well, where would we go? Because we will not go somewhere with lots of bugs or spiders. We will not go somewhere with snakes. And we're like, well, that narrows it down to nowhere. Yep. So <laughs> guess we're staying here. Um, yeah, it's, oof, I don't like them. No, they're terrible. Um, I, and it's so strange when people are like, oh, I have a snake as a pet. I'm no. like, uh, if Lucifer disguised himself as a snake, that's enough for me. Hard pass. I'm out. Right. If it's good enough for the devil, <laughs> maybe avoid. Hard pass. It's yep. a hard pass. <laughs> so those two, I think, are fairly common. Mm -hmm. Snakes, spiders, the phobias a lot of people have. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about phobias maybe that are a little bit more unique to us. Um, heights. For me. Heights is a big one. And this is a newer phobia. The this, first yeah. half of my life was this was not an issue. Um, I went to Europe and I climbed to the top of the Eiffel Tower. And if you've done that, you know that it's you can see all the way to the bottom the whole time. Um, I climbed all the stairs of the Cologne Cathedral. I, you know, I, it, they didn't bother me yeah. heights did like i i was the one leaning over the side of the cathedral and like taking pictures down um didn't they didn't face me um and somewhere along the line my brain was like no ma'am and now i'm terrified i um like we have a one of the convention centers here in town has uh, escalators that go up like three stories yep. and I and one of our malls in town goes up like the five or six stories of the mall and I can't look like I have to look at my feet and hold on to the railing and pray that I don't die it's, yeah, it's, and, it's, <laughs> and I realize that it's irrational but like my knees get shaky like I'm terrified so even when um like on cruise ships, on Princess cruise ships, they have that like walk no. thing where you like walk out on the glass and you can look down. Nope. That is, I've had some people who have made comments. They're like, I, you know, I don't know that like, it, I feel like Sherry's playing that up a little bit. That she doesn't want to walk on that. Oh no. No, I'm telling you, that is a genuine fear of hers when I, she steps her foot right, out. Right. Like the blood in my face is gone. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm terrified. And it's interesting because that's <laughs> And I a, don't know why. And what's interesting is that it's a phobia that has developed over time. This isn't yeah. something you've always been afraid of. No. And I don't know why it all of a sudden just sort of became a fear of mine, but it really is. You don't remember like there wasn't a, oh my God, I stumbled and almost fell from a high spot or no. I, there's no thing that led to it. No. Like it just, I, I was fine with it. And then like. I was like, oh, I don't really feel, this isn't great for me. And then now it's just, it's a full on like fear. And I mean, to the point now where he like on escalators, like he stands right behind me and he will like 
make sure that I'm okay yeah. going up an escalator yeah, because or, I'm terrified. Yeah, or I'll stand on the <laughs> side where there's like the big drop off, that yep. kind of thing. Yep. Because I know that she, I know that she's afraid of that. Yeah. And I think that that's one of the important things when it comes to phobias, uh, that they don't, and most of the times aren't rational. There's no reason. Right. There's no rational behind them. They just are. Right. And so when I was, I was in Paris in uh, June of 2000. Okay. And again, climbed to the top of the Eiffel Tower, had no problem. When we were there in 2017, so 17 years later, in May of 2017, part of like the, one of the observation decks has like that clear, like yep. the glass mm -hmm. and you were like, let's go. And I was like, absolutely not. Like I couldn't even stand on the edge of it and look down because but 17 I, years earlier, you had no problem. 17 years earlier, no problem at all. That's fascinating. I know. And I don't know what clicked in my brain, but something just went awry. <laughs> Gosh. And I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> so I don't mind heights. I will say like, I do feel like my stomach turn a little bit if it's like really high. Um, but I have no problem, you know, going to the top of a skyscraper and like putting, you know, my forehead against the window and looking down. Like I, I have no problem with that. Um, but yeah, I start shaking. I know. I know. I feel get, like, when I get like near windows, like yeah. at, at tall buildings, but I have no problems on airplanes. That's, that's what I was just going to get. I can so look out weird. a window on an airplane with no problem. It does. It does not make sense. But phobias don't. Right. And now, I'll talk, now I'll tell you about one of my phobias. That this is the phobia of mine. That you don't have to laugh at me. I didn't laugh at you. I know. I do make fun of you for this one, and I'm really sorry because I understand no, it's like you're a legitimate. Not sorry. I understand that it's a legitimate fear, but it just makes me laugh a lot. So. And I don't know where it came from. Kind of like <laughs> the heights. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't think I've always had this. I've looked to see if there's an actual name for it, and I can't really find it. Although I have read lots of reports from people online uh, who also feel this way. Right. And it started out feeling like a fear of kites. Yes, I said kites, like the things in the air. The pieces of the paper. Piece of, okay, rude. Um, <laughs> yes. But here's the thing. It's actually more than that because yeah. it's not kites. It is the feeling or the fear of being lifted up into the air. And here's the thing. I'm a big guy. It is made out of balsa wood and plastic. I get that's not possible. But when the wind catches it and there's that tug, you feel it against the string. That like is fear inducing to me. Or the thought of like holding a bunch of balloons. Like those people at Disney who are like, oh, I have a hundred balloons. I'm like, you're crazy. And that's one of the things that I've always wanted to do is like have us hold the balloons and like take the photo. And you're like, no, nope. I'll have you hold the balloons and take the photo. <laughs> I'm not holding the balloons. Um, but here's what's so interesting. It's also the reason I'd never go like paragliding or parasailing or not, not para, yeah, parasailing. Um, because it's that being pulled up. But here's what's kind of weird, Jerry. Um, it does not work the other way. So when I think of skydiving, mm -hmm. like free fall into the earth, not scary at all. But you know what the scariest part when I think about skydiving is? When the parachute opens. It's when you pull the parachute and it like catches and it lifts you into the air. Would it be better if the parachute didn't open? Honestly, yes. <laughs> like, let me hit the ground at 200 miles an hour. Oh, no. Because that, the thought of the tension and being pulled into the air is terrifying and i understand how weird this sounds like it's not rational it makes no sense it's completely dumb but it exists yeah like there's a guy in downtown anchorage on the park strip that has like this gigantic kites he has yeah that are just like they're, they're huge and he'll stand out there and i can watch a kite and not get afraid like seeing kites doesn't freak me out right. i think they're beautiful mm -hmm. but if he was like hey you want to hold this i'd be like absolutely i don't <laughs> like, for sure no for Thank sure you. i do not want to do that <laughs> and i don't know again i don't know where that came from i don't think it's ever been i don't think it's always been that way because I, I was feel just like, gonna ask like was has this been a thing like since you were a kid no like... i think i think i remember flying kites as a kid hmm. like and so it hasn't been it's just I don't, I don't know it's that it's that being pulled into the air yeah kind of feeling so up for me is a horror movie <laughs> Like, like absolutely not <laughs> absolutely not oh man what if you could just like sit in your like chair and the house just rises no no okay but again like you flying up into the air in an airplane no problem right like doesn't make sense at all but it is that it is that feeling like you are being like lifted into the air 
Air. Like a hot air balloon? Absolutely not. I don't think I could do that because of the height. Because of the height? Yeah. So that that is where our fears overlap. Yeah. Hot air balloons. Hot air balloons. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, if we were ever on Fear Factor, they were like a million dollars to go up in a hot air balloon. Now or like skydiving. Yeah. Like I'm not. Nope. Interesting. Nope. All right. Next phobia for you. Uh, right. <laughs> this is one that we touched on in our podcast last week. We sure did. <laughs> um, zombies. Um, okay. The cranberry song. The, no, the oh. the actual zombies. So here's the thing. And I think I talked about this in the podcast last week, but I'm going to expand a little bit. Um, I can read books and watch movies about vampires, mm-hmm. and werewolves, and not just like Twilight, but like Queen of the Damned. Like, loved that movie in college. Um, have no, And that's, I mean, kind of scary. I have no problem with scary, cruel fae with magical powers that can eviscerate you in a second. No problem. Um, it's the zombies. I yeah. can't. I cannot read a book or watch a movie about zombies. Mm-hmm. And I don't. I don't know why. I don't know why. Like that's my what my brain is like. Nope. Like any other mythical creature, I'm like sure, bring it on. Um, but zombies, nope. Mm-mm. It's something different for you. I can't do it, and I. I don't. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's just for whatever reason, can't do it. Do you think so? The next one I'm gonna talk about is actually one that used to be a fear of mine. Oh, um, yeah. That so honestly, my if you would have asked me a decade ago, Adam, what are your three biggest fears or phobias? <laughs> Snakes, spiders, and public speaking. The thought of being in front of people um, terrified me. Now, it's still something that terrifies you. Yes, like that is also a shared. Well, a shared not pho- anymore. Really, not, that's what you just gonna say. Not anymore. Yeah. So. We both terrified of being in front of people. Um, yeah, and that's kind of always been a thing for me. Mm-hmm. I had to do like a speech class in college, and um, thank God I actually was very sick a lot of my sophomore year, uh, no, freshman year of college when I had this class because, um, and one of like the professor of it was one of our like block professors, and so she knew me and she felt bad for me, and so she. I think I really only did one or two, like, speeches that I had to do in front of the class. Everything mm. else, she accepted just my written speech. And she was like, that's good. Interesting. So I passed the class, um, but she didn't make me because I was so sick <laughs> my freshman year of college. But and, e- even still now. But even still now, I, oh, man, I'm so bad at it. And I'm, I'm terrified of being in front of people. And it's not even just necessarily, like, a crowd of people. It's like, I don't like the focus on me um ever <laughs> yeah if there's a room of like six or eight people mm-hmm. and you have to share something or say something and everyone's looking at you my heart is pounding yes it unless it's like close friends of mine and we were just having a discussion like then i'm fine but like if there's one stranger i am petrified so that used to be not quite to that level of me because i was fine in smaller groups but once the group got above like let's say 20 people I really started to get uh, this huge feeling of anxiety. Yeah. And it was interesting because it was when I took the job as the executive director. And I actually remember thinking about this, that, man, if I say yes to this offer, it means I'm going to have to do a lot more speaking in public. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, like, maybe I shouldn't take the job because of that. Because I remember I, that being a discussion. It was a discussion. It's like, if I say yes to this, this is one of the things that it means. And that really, really scares me. Yeah. And I just remember like nights before you had a big thing, um, you were literally like sick. Like, oh, I, I will say it has only been in the last three or four years when I get up to speak, whether it's 50 people or 2,000, 3,000 people that I've spoken in front of. Um it has only been in the last few years that I have not wanted to instantly go throw up beforehand. Yeah. Like I would feel so sick. And here's the thing. I've always had great feedback when I speak. Like you're it, a fantastic speaker. Thank you. And it's not, so it's not a confidence thing. It's just like this fear of phobia thing. Right. But it's so interesting to me because that has changed completely. Like even today, I went and spoke today in an event of like 150 people. And four years ago, that would have crippled me for the whole day. Right. And to me, it was like, yeah, no big deal. Got it. It's easy. Like, See you after lunch. Yeah, see you after lunch. I'll be right back. Right. Um, and so, like, even now, like, in front of, you know, a few thousand people, that doesn't, 
Like, I feel no nerves around it anymore. And I'm so glad because you really are so good at it. Um, and I don't know if it's just a confidence thing. Like, you've just realized, like, oh, I got this. Like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. um, but. I think some of it is, maybe some of it's a confidence thing. I actually think some of it is a repetition thing. Yeah. I've done it enough now that I've seen that I'm not going to die. <laughs> like, and I know that's, that sounds, but that sounds dramatic, but that's true. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that is the case with a lot of phobias. Um, like, I'm not going to lie. That does not mean that we're going to surround ourselves by snakes and no, spiders. But no, but here's the thing. Do you not put me down for that? I'm not, I, I wouldn't <laughs> do that either. However, if our goal was to say, you know what? In 2024, we're going to conquer this phobia. And like, I'm going to get over my heights thing. You're going to get over your heights thing. Or we are going to get over a snake thing. Like... I do think there are things we could do that might potentially help us get over a phobia. Probably, yeah. And I just think that... I don't know what to do about the zombie thing. <laughs> I got it. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I think you're just stuck with that one. I think you're just stuck with the zombie thing. Dang it. Um, But that, that's been actually kind of an encouragement to me to actually get over a phobia because it was, it was crippling to me for most of my adult life. Yeah. I was asked to speak for like a decade at different events and different retreats and different camps and different things like this. And if you could get out of it, you would? I'd always say no. Yeah. I'm like, oh, sorry. Nope. Somebody else do that. Nope. Absolutely not. Yeah. Because I was so filled with fear. And now I just, now I genuinely actually enjoy it. Yeah. Still don't enjoy snakes. Nope. Absolutely not. Nope. Any other phobias we missed? Can you um, think of? Yeah. One that we sort of touched on. Um, I, when we were talking about this um, and I think that it stems from my fear of not necessarily public, well, kind of public speaking, like being oh, right. um, like the center focus. Um, I also, I, I think that it's a fear of rejection hmm. for me. And I think, you know, a lot of people have that in some form or another. Um, but I, I feel like I take, things to like the next level so like i hate being the center of attention because that just gives people more fuel to reject me um i am very slow to open up to people because the more they have of me the more they can reject me um if i have any skin in the game then they can hurt me and if i don't if i hold myself yep. back then they can't hurt me they can't reject me um and so i i do find myself um holding back a lot because of because of that i just i don't want people to really know me because they can hurt me through rejection or through other methods and so and so to me that's where it's that, like a self-preservation thing that's where phobias are interesting because there are some of them that are just so irrational like we talked about kites and balloons and zombies <laughs> right. but then there's some of them that are more tied to um, identity issues or mm -hmm. they're like fears that we have based on like maybe childhood or past traumas or right. things like that. Experience, yeah. Experiences, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I, I've let people in and they've hurt me, so I'm not going to anymore. Yeah. And so yeah. I think, I think things like that. No, first of all, just so you guys know, Sharon and I are huge believers in counseling and therapy. Correct. Big believers. Everyone should be involved. <laughs> um, but I think some things like that, those are the things that are processed with a professional. Right. Whereas like, I mean, maybe a professional would be like, here, hold some snakes. <laughs> I would probably fire that professional instantly. Correct. Um, I'm never going back to that person. But that's the thing is, I think in life we have both of those things. We have those things that are just irrational phobias. Mm -hmm. And then we have those things that are just like, oh, that's more of a, like that is tied to trauma. That is tied to past experience. Correct. And I think that's where that one is tied to. That one is for sure. Yeah. And that does, I've seen that hinder you because it's interesting. You made a comment earlier and I almost stopped you, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> you talked about how I'm just not good at it. You're talking about public speaking. And here's what's so interesting, because whenever I would be deathly afraid of speaking in public and I'd get done, you would always be one of the most like the first, you would always be the first voice I heard and one of the most encouraging voices. You talk about how good I did. You talk about like how great it was, how like all of that kind of stuff. But it's the same for you. Like whenever you have spoken in front of like groups or things, I'm always like, damn, like Sherry's genuinely really good at this. <laughs> and so I think that you are good at it. You're also just very afraid of it, which I relate to because like, oh, that was me. Yeah. Like you do communicate very well um, in those settings. They're just really scary settings. They're very scary settings for me. And I mean, like I said, even in, you know, 
a smaller setting if it's just like a circle of people like if we're all just sort of discussing like I am unless I know everybody there very well I'm the person who sits there quietly and doesn't say anything because I don't want to be the center of attention um, because I don't want to bring people's focus on to me yep because of because of fear yep. like I'm I'm afraid of Ugh, all kinds of things. I'm afraid of looking stupid. I'm afraid of um, rejection. I'm afraid of opening up and having people make fun of me or um, rejecting whatever it was I said. Or, and I'm I'm sensitive to the point where if somebody disagrees with something that I say, it's like a personal attack on me, even if it's actually not. Like logically, I know that it's not, and they're just discussing. But like, I'm just like, oop! I just rather not put myself in that situation <laughs> and, you, and so what you do in that situation is you can shut down because you don't take it as a rejection of one of your ideas you take it as a rejection of you correct there's a part of me and it's i'm my not, artistic soul oh 100 <laughs> there's a part of me and i'm not going to do it on this podcast it's not the time or the place uh -oh. i so badly want a counselor and therapist this thing because like there are so many things you just said that i'm like oh god i want to dive deep into that because like i know the roots of that because i know you yeah but we're not going to do that i know but i think that's I important know. to remember that sometimes the phobias and the fears and the things that we are are scared about and the things that we battle those things have roots in past trauma right and i think that i think that there's two points of this and actually i'm really glad that you just shared that because i think this is a good way to end the podcast when we're looking at our fears and our phobias snakes and spiders for us is one that just like that just is a phobia that exists i don't think that 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 is based in any kind of past trauma nope. i think i just don't like anything creepy crawly and that includes bugs or spiders or or snakes. And They're so, all creepy crawlies and they all need to die. And so we can we can say, <laughs> like, I'm okay with myself having a phobia of that mm -hmm. or myself not wanting to be lifted in the air by balloons, however or dumb that is. Or eaten by zombies. Or eaten by zombies. Correct. But I think also it gives us the opportunity when there are other phobias in our life or fears in our life, sometimes we say, actually... I think this is more than just a phobia. Like there might be something <laughs> here. You talk to my counselor about this. Yeah. There might be something here that actually would be healthy for me to unpack in a, like in a professional setting. Yeah. And I think that that's a really good example of that. Yeah. Because like, it's actually not about public speaking. Like there's a reason that you don't want for me. I'll, I'll be very, very honest uh, for a second, you know, for, uh, for a number of years, I was a pastor in a very large church, a church of thousands here in Anchorage. And one of the things I was over was kind of the entire Sunday experience. Any week I could have been on stage mm -hmm. in front of thousands of people. But for seven years in that job, I was never on stage once. And the reason I wasn't on stage once was for a couple specific reasons, primarily around fear. Because I knew that in high school, I was a huge partier. I knew I sold drugs. I knew that I like had gotten people in this town addicted to stuff. I knew that I had done like highly questionable moral things for a long period of my life. And I knew my story. And I thought that I remember thinking if I'm on stage at a church and somebody who somebody walks in, who knew me then, what are they going to think about all this? And I didn't want to be a black eye to something that I believed in or something I thought that mattered. And so to me, I viewed myself as a hindrance or a liability to the work there. And so I was like, you know what I need to do? I need to not be in front of people. Like I can run everything from the back. I can be the puppet master. I can make the whole show happen. But like I can't be out front because what if somebody who knew me then sees me? What will they think? And I had such fear around that that for years of my life, I, I, I don't know. I let myself buy into unhealthy fear rather than take the time to process that and get over that. Yeah. And I think that that's, the difference between like when we're looking at the things that we would call phobias, what is just a normal, irrational phobia that it, I'm okay with this existing in my life? <laughs> but then also like, what are the things that maybe like I should try to work on? Right. Yeah. We're not going to work on spiders and snakes. Nope. Agreed? Or zombies. Or zombies. Maybe zombies. Mm. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> what if you, what if I come home tomorrow? And I mean, just, we have a whole plan now. So we do. If you listen to last week's if episode, listen to last week's podcast. You know, we, we talked you all know. about our zombie apocalypse we, plan. We have a plan, <laughs> which is ridiculous. All right, Sherry. Oh boy, is that good? I think so. What is the question you want to ask them this week? Every week mm. we try to ask you guys a question. Did you have? You know, what? I have one. Mm -hmm. Nope. You tell me. You were about to open your mouth. 
I Ladies yeah. First. I want to know if you have any just r- irrational, like That's they exactly don't make sense, say. like zombies. Um, I understand it does not make sense that I am terrified of zombies and am fine with every other like mythological creature. Zombie, zombie, <laughs> zombie. Ooh, two weeks in a <laughs> row. <laughs> That's the new thing. Don't I'm gonna, jack up your throat this time. I'm gonna sing the cranberries zombie song every week on the podcast. Oh wow! No, I'm not. Could we just sing a different cranberry song every <laughs> every week? The only other song I think I know is like linger. Oh, what's the song that's on the You've Got Mail? Um, soundtrack my sister and I watched You've Got Mail when we were I, I when she know. was here and we like sang along the whole time we were like this is the best soundtrack we've taken a big turn I know sorry so I agree with Cherry though that was the question I was going to ask yeah any irrational ones irrational that... ones that really just don't make sense like we don't want your normal ones like snakes and spiders we want your your zombies we want your <laughs> zombies and your kites <laughs> it's so ridiculous it's so ridiculous yeah friends we love you so much thanks for listening to the Lug Life Podcast and we will yeah. see you Next week. Bye. Bye.